Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Rob Asibe, Associate Program Director at San Joaquin General Hospital Family Medicine Residency Program and new Physician Director here at California Academy of Family Physicians. And we know that addiction medicine is family medicine. Did you know that only one in five people with opioid use disorder receive treatment? We'd like to change those odds. In our latest series, we bring you stories of doctors and their patients who have worked together to reduce the harm done by opioid use disorder. These brief stories will bring you into the hearts and the minds of our guests. We hope that this will inspire you to do everything in your power to bring medical attention to the opioid use disorder patients in your practice. Hey Tipu, here we are again in episode four out of five in our one in five series. Tipu, can you believe that this series is almost done? I'm so excited to hear that you spoke with the infamous Dr. Jay Lee. Now we all know and respect this family doc. Tell me a little bit more about the conversation you had with Dr. Jay Lee. Yeah, Rob. Jay's great, right? I mean, he's been around as a practicing physician who then spent some time doing faculty work and evolved into a medical directorship role. So he's really seen systems-based practices evolve from how do you just do this as a first prescription to how do you implement this within your healthcare system? So this is going to be a great episode where we really get to talk to Jay about how you incorporate building medications for opiate use disorder into your practice, both on a one-on-one physician prescriber level, but also on a bigger systems level. I remember one quote that Jay always said, we're all scientists and we're also artists in the way we approach the care of our patients. And I have always loved that. Yeah, Jay's really been an inspiration to so many of us in family medicine. I grew up on Jay's coattails watching him do a lot of family medicine, which inspired how I practice as a physician. And I really resonate with one of those lessons that he always tells us is never stop growing. And that's what this is all about. Again, Tipu, you have conversation with another legend. I'm a little bit jealous, but I can't wait for our listeners to hear it. Let's get to it. Thanks, Rob. Hi, I'm Dr. Tipu Khan. I'm a family physician and addiction medicine specialist. Today, I've got the pleasure of talking with my good friend, Dr. Jay Lee, and we're going to talk about why working with patients who have opiate use disorder, also known as OUD, is so vital to his practice. Dr. Lee, thanks, first off, for taking the time to talk to us. I know you're a very busy man. You wear a lot of different hats. I wanted to see if you could tell us just a little bit about yourself for those who don't know you, but also what brought you to work with patients who struggle with an opiate use disorder? Yeah, happy to be here. First and foremost, I'm a family physician. I've been in the business for over 20 years. And my journey with treating patients experiencing substance use disorder really began in a leadership role, believe it or not. Because I've been practicing family medicine for a long time, the treatment modalities to be able to do this earlier in my career were not really available. So it was something that I had to learn later on. The story really began in 2016 when I made the transition from teaching at a residency program to becoming chief medical officer at Venice Family Clinic, which is a community health center in Los Angeles. And in the course of my first 90 days there, I learned about some of the innovative work being done at the community health center where they were doing some cutting edge work around getting patients with substance use disorder induced in an ambulatory setting, which really at the time in 2016 was kind of unheard of and not really done widely. And so as a leader, I leaned in and I said, well, tell me more. How can I learn more about what we've been doing? And this was in partnership with the RAND Corporation, essentially setting up a scientific study to see if this was even feasible or doable in the ambulatory setting. And what I found is that, indeed, we were doing the work in a meaningful way, kind of on the DL. And as we started to implement some of the protocols, it became very evident that this was benefiting patients greatly. Wow, thanks, Jay. I appreciate that background. And it really reminds me how it was difficult when we first started managing these patients and figuring out appropriate algorithms and treatment protocols in the ambulatory care setting. Tell me, how do you manage that now in 2024? What does an opiate use disorder patient look like in your clinic? How difficult is it to manage them? How do you integrate that patient into your busy clinic workflow on a day-to-day basis? 
I wear a couple of hats, as you mentioned earlier. And one of the hats that I wear is as a family doc that continues to see patients. Today, I see patients at KCS Health in Orange County. And KCS has an interesting background in that it really started out as a clinic focused on immigrants. And as it turns out, there are immigrants that sometimes interface with the carceral system. And as they leave the carceral system, there's a need for court-mandated therapy. And out of that blossomed the need to provide medical care, which is kind of how the clinic was born. Because of the work being done with the carceral system, and as treatments for opioid use disorder became much more prevalent, this became clearly an area where there could be some need to go deep and to develop a way to manage those patients. And that's really how today we're one of the largest prescribers of buprenorphine and other treatments for opioid use disorder in the county. Thanks in large part to the leadership of my friend and colleague, Mario Sambartolome, with whom I work closely. And the way it looks like in my practice is it's like primary care. <laughs> a patient comes to see me. I'm there as their first contact. I'm there to provide continuous care. I'm there to be comprehensive and I'm there to help with coordination of care. We also do have psychiatrists and behavioral health in our clinic setting. And there's a lot of co-management that happens because patients don't just have opioid use disorder, but they may have moderate depression or anxiety or other psychiatric illnesses that need help. And so it really has just become part of what I do on a day-in, day-out basis in terms of taking care of patients. Hey, Jay, so I'm a new family physician, and I come to work for you at your FQHC. And I look at my schedule. I've got 12 patients on my schedule for the half day. And the first patient that pops up says, OUD management, refill Suboxone. I haven't done that before. I come to you, ask you for help. What do I do next? How do I manage this patient I haven't seen before on medication for opiate use disorder? I think the first and most important step is to take a good history. And these are skills that any well-trained family physician should be able to do is take a good history, understand what the context is, why the patient's on the medication, and how they've been doing. Earlier in my career, in that 16 to 17 period, when I was CMO at Venice, there were a lot of new inductions. And as we've matured with the use of ambulatory inductions, I have a lot more patients that are coming to me on maintenance therapy, either from other physicians, like addiction medicine specialists such as yourselves, or even from the ER or a hospital stay or jail, because it's much more widespread now in terms of protocols for where patients can receive Suboxone. So the first thing I do is get a good history. The second thing is asking them how they're doing on the medication, what side effects are they experiencing? I like to ask a lot of questions about like, are you able to do the things that you normally would like to do in your life to be a productive human being? I would say as my practice of this has gotten more mature, more and more patients percentage-wise are coming to me on the right dose, doing actually well, quite stable. So let me give you an example of somebody who came to see me. This patient is a mom. And as a result of an interface with the carceral system, was in court-mandated therapy, needed to be on Suboxone, and also needed to be in behavioral health counseling. And she didn't necessarily come to me by choice, but came to me and was somebody who was on a stable dose, doing quite well, actually, and as a result, was able to maintain custody of her children, which was really important. And my job was actually to not tinker with anything, <laughs> and then just to work to get her the prescription and then to build that relationship with her so that we could handle the other things. You know, she'd overdo for mammogram and lipids and diabetes check and all that stuff. And again, to normalize this, making this really part of what we do in family medicine, it's some of the most beautiful family medicine that we can do because we were able to retain the family structure. She was able to continue to be the best mom that she can. And that all came as a result of our ability to provide her with the right treatment and keep her in a situation where she wasn't getting in trouble with the law and also from a health perspective, just be able to be the best human that she can be. All right. Not all of us in the primary care setting have access to addiction specialists or experienced uh, physicians to guide us through those first few steps. 
Now that you have been doing this medication-assisted therapy and MOUD for some time, and you also wear the hat of being a leader in a clinic system, what tips or advice or recommendations do you have for busy family docs who've got 12 patients on their half-day schedule who want to pick up a new skill set and treat this patient? How do they do that and how do they incorporate that into their busy daily practice without feeling overwhelmed? I think one of the big important things is that we approach this in the same way that we do anything else. I would say a lifelong learning mindset, wear that, own it. And in a weird way, it's not unlike some of the novel diabetes treatments that we're seeing right now. That wasn't available when I was training 20 plus years ago, but it's something that as a result of going to conferences and meetings and reading journals that I've learned, it's supplanted, for example, GOP-1s have supplanted now my prescribing of sulfonurias, pretty much gone away completely from that. And in that same vein, that's been my approach with treating patients with buprenorphine. I view it as treating a chronic disease. And in a lot of ways, it's even more magical because you can help create stability for patients and they can get back to being productive humans in the ways that they're able to. And it's been incredibly gratifying to be able to do that. And granted, I don't have a huge panel of patients that do have OUD, but for the ones that do come to me, I'm able to provide that service and I don't necessarily need to refer them anywhere else. I can dial a friend if I need to. And I know there's a lot of resources within the California Academy of Family Physicians for folks to dial a friend and get the help that they need. Jay, thanks. That was a lot of great information and a lot of great tips and tricks on how to integrate this into your practice. And you've really distilled it down to some basic bread and butter points that do not seem that daunting. It seems like any primary care doc can just go out and do this and should do this. Do you have any last thoughts that you'd like to leave us with and share with the group out there that's listening in? Yeah, a couple things. One is I'd like to reiterate, as the science of clinical medicine and family medicine evolves, you're either that attending that changes with the times or you're the attending that doesn't. And I'd like to think that we're all scientists and we're also artists in the way we approach the care of patients. And I would definitely encourage folks to view this as treating a chronic illness, much in the same way that we do with diabetes. And as I mentioned earlier, my diabetes practice has changed a lot because of the advances in science. And I think in the same vein, we should be thinking about treatment for OUD. The science has changed and we have new tools that we can use to help patients. The truth is residents who are currently leaving training have this as part of their skill set because it's a requirement. There's going to be more of us that are going to come along here that are going to be able to have the skills to be able to do this and the mindset. I know there's long been stigma around OUD, and I think it's high time for us to take a different approach and to get over our moral high ground, if you will, and realize that patients are struggling and they need our help, and we have the skills and ability to be able to do it. So let's make that happen. The most important thing that we do as family physicians is to be there and to give a damn about our patients. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee. As we battle the increasing number of deaths from OUD, family physicians really are the frontline defense. Let's take charge as Dr. Lee has done and provide excellent care to patients with OUD. Let's give them the same quality of care we give to other chronic disease states like hypertension and diabetes, just like you said, Jay. If you all out there need help getting started, please go to our website familydocs.org forward slash S-U-D. There you can find and apply for an MOUD champion who is a peer who can support you and walk you through those first couple prescriptions as you get started down this pathway. Remember, addiction medicine is just good family medicine. Fight on. Many, many thanks to Dr. J. Lee for sharing your story with us. And also, thanks again to our interviewer of the year, Tipu Khan. I hope that Dr. Lee's experience moves every one of you to explore offering MOUD in your setting. And as I said before, if you aren't already there, listen more.
This podcast was created, produced, and recorded by the California Academy of Family Physicians. The Family Docs podcast series, One in Five, Increasing the Odds for OUD Patients, is supported by the California Department of Healthcare Services. The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of any entities they represent or the California Academy of Family Physicians.